you know, you have 42 million cards. I'll give you $100 million. Yeah. $100 million, you don't it. <laughs> All right. I am about to check out one of the biggest sports card libraries in the entire world. Rob, what are we about to see? You're about to see the most insane Raiders of the Lost Ark Amazon Fulfillment Center Dewey Decimal on steroids thing <laughs> that you've ever seen. And it's called the Burbank Warehouse. And we're going to give you a quick tour. Come on in. All right. Yeah, we got, we got a cast of characters coming with us. <laughs> All right, let's Character do this. Right. <laughs> We've got the ladies well, it's of the, the happiest place here. in the uh, happiest place in the lobby. <laughs> we got someone working so, here. We got multiple people working. Oh, here. we got guys here. Yeah, we got guys here. Um, yeah, it's uh, this is crazy. This is absolutely insane. This is like Costco. This is welcome to Burbank Sports Cards. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what you see is the world's largest inventory of sports cards. Everything you'll see here is color-coded by sport. It's in year, brand, number order. The building is data-based. The building is imaged. Everything you see here is on our Beckett Marketplace site. Everything you see here is on eBay, literally. Um, we got 2.4 million different listings on eBay and the cards are super simple to find. Literally, I could spend 10 minutes with you and you could be pulling orders for me, maybe even five minutes. Do you know your ABCs? Where do I sign up? Do you need <laughs> me? <laughs> Trust me, SPS you don't want this. Trust me. I might but buy a little bit. <laughs> if you know your ABCs, your one, two, threes, and your colors, you're effective here. I built this around my mother. And if she could find cards, I figured anyone can find cards. And so she was the original mama um, in the industry. <laughs> but um, just to give you Love an idea, it. so let's just say we're looking for 2017-18 Panini status random insert number four. So yellow is basketball. So this aisle right here will run from 2005-6 all the way down to 2021-22. And you'll see it goes in order. We're in 06-07. We're in 07-08. And everything is alphabetical, so all the brands are alphabetical. So literally, you can find almost anything. If I wanted 2009-10 Prestige Basketball, there are three 5,000 count boxes of Prestige Basketball, all in number order. And all these cards are, are imaged, and all these cards we can get to super quick. Now you have base cards, but you'll also have inserts, parallels, autos, jerseys. So let's move forward. We're gonna kick Kevin this is in the ass. Absolutely What's insane. Happening? Everything good? How you doing, Kevin? What are you looking for? Orders? So I literally picked something that is right where he's working, but 2017-18, we get to that section. And um, literally, so you're looking, it's Donruss, it's Donruss Optic, it's hoops, it's all alphabetical by brand. Then you pull the box out. Then you'll have all the base cards. Then you'll have all your inserts alphabetically in order. And then all the cards are in number order within that. So literally, ABCs, one, two, threes, and colors, like some of the newer stuff, optic basketball, boom. This is all 2021 optic basketball. And again, I don't have my glasses on me, or do I? I do. So check this out. So all your base cards are in order. And then the first thing we're gonna have is air defense. Again, we're in the A's. You'll have air defense hollows, air defense purple, all stars. It's all alphabetical. So again, ABCs, one, two, threes, and colors. Uh, my guys can pull anything. Again, all these cards are imaged. So, it's yeah, everything, it's, every, this is, Dewey Decimal is jealous of what we set up here. It's like ultimate organization. And you get an order for 100 different cards from 100 different places. You can't spend more on labor than the cost of the sale. You need to efficiently be able to find cards. And this system, I don't think there's an, another system quite like it in the world, so. How long have you had this system going? Um, basically, ever since I took over the business, it's just been scaled and refined. And um, again, when you're online, you can't have three of these boxes stacked on each other. You, you know, you need to have the shelving. You can see the shelving only has about a half inch between it, so it maximizes every single cubic foot as well as square foot. And um, my guys are constantly upgrading things. 2021 Optic was done last week. It'll probably be done next week because what comes in all the time? Mosaic, Prism, Optic. You know, it's like the same stuff. So we keep adding to the inventory, adding new cards we didn't already have, scanning those new cards. Because once I have an image once, 
I have it in perpetuity. That's like Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank. Perpetuity. That's a so, that's a million dollar. That's word a right lot there. of word right there. That's a big word, dude. Right, Mama? Right. He's a teacher. She'll tell you. That's and a I big have, ass word. I have a question for you, Rob. Yes, ma'am. So I'm just thinking, like, that you call this inventory, but do you consider yourself a collector? Because this is like extreme set collecting. No, you know, yes and no. You know what? No, I don't. Con There's no nostalgia because I work on this stuff all the time. So I don't need to go into it once it's organized. Every card comes through me. Believe it or not, everything comes through me. But it's got to feel good to have it this organized. I feel great being here. <laughs> yeah, right? I feel like, great. This is what set collectors do. <laughs> one sport, one year, one brand. Now you scale it going all the way back into vintage. So, like, you'll see, like, literally 1949 Bowman reprints. They're all in number order. It's That's the kind of stuff that... You know, you pull it out. It's just so random. We just try to carry as much as possible. I think I have some workers now. Are you pulling orders? Oh, yes, you got order. the step stool for you. For free. For those vertically challenged, basis. we have step stool. So show us the, show us the process. Um, there's 13 steps in order to take a card that you have brought me in a random triple shoe to when I'm selling it to Mama and she opens up her envelope. There's 13 steps. Mama's right, because if you saw, I just finished the set and I got three cards from Burbank. Nice. Cards. Was it easy? Super easy. I couldn't have finished it without you guys and good prices too. When I was younger, and a lot of my in-person autograph friends will love this, I used to buy cards from you guys that were cataloged just like this and I would buy them from you and they were always in order and they were cheap, cheap base cards and I would go and get them autographed and they were from you. Collection comes in, what's the first thing you gotta do? You gotta break it by sport, correct? Then you got to break it by year, correct? You got to break it by brand, correct? Now, every brand like Optic could have 140 different sub brands. Mm -hmm. So you got to break it by sub brands. So you're already four steps in, right? Cards got to be sorted. So that's five. So now you got to scan the card. That's six. Now you have these images that you need to map to a database. You got to scan the front. You got to, you got to map the front. You got to map the back. So you're already at seven steps and you haven't even priced the card yet. So then you got to price the card. That's eight. Jeez. Then you got to take the card and intersort it into your inventory. That's nine. Um, then you got to um, you got to pull the card when the order is placed. Then you got to package the card. You have to ship the card, and then you need to provide customer service on the back end in case anything goes sideways. That's thirteen things, and you can't eliminate any of them. So when someone sells you a card for ninety nine cents on eBay, and you're like, that's a ten cent card. No, it's not a 10 cent card. The money it takes to get that card to eBay is substantial. The labor to pull it, the labor to ship it, and the fact that you're not going to a store and digging through unorganized things and wasting your time. So um, it's a service we provide. Um, we add thousands of cards a day. I have staff that does nothing but database work, ID work, pulling work, shipping work. Um, it's it's, we got 23 people here and they all have specific roles in the place. So this is an extension of our physical store that you love, the Burbank experience, but not every card will be in my showcases. I don't need to have Larry Walker box and a Larry Walker card in my showcase, but I might have a thousand different Larry Walkers in this building that 24 seven, I can be your local card shop for. So when it comes to local card shops, it's imperative, in my opinion, to have a digital virtual component as well as just a physical store. Otherwise, most of the cards you buy, you'll never, never sell. So, How many cards do you think are in here? There's over 41 million. There's 41 million cards in here. According to our database, there's 41 million cards, of which 2.4 million are different. Because obviously, we have quantities of every card. Do you feel like you'll ever run out of room? Always. <laughs> so how, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do there? Uh, I I don't know. I, I we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That'll be Ryan's problem. Hopefully, I'm retired by then. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm I'm never gonna retire. I love this too much. I, I I live five minutes away. I get to work with my dad. Get to work with my kids, and have become really close friends with so many people in the business, especially my customers. That's the best part. Yeah. And meeting new people too. Right? right. Making new friends? Yes, new friends. All right. Yeah, they're already looking through the boxes. Nice. And they're in order by number oh, too. Of course That's they they're are. And they're just perfect. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's women love this. And you know what? My best my best sorters have always been women. Always been women. Um very task oriented, very organizational. And I literally hand five thousand count boxes off for sorting. Um Mrs. No-No, Eddie and George's mom, will have it back the next day. 5,000 cards. And they'll sort them for you? Yeah. Wow. How do you, th how do you think this all got sorted? 
I didn't sort any of them. We've had over the years so many people that just take home product, sort it, and bring it back. Then people can add it to the database, and then people can... All the steps that we just talked about. None of it's easy. It's high-hanging fruit. I mean, there's a lot of easy stuff in this business. Yeah. But this, this is, is top of tree, basically, type would, of stuff. I would pay to watch her sort it. <laughs> I did yeah. that for three How hours so last efficient? night. Just <laughs> sorting. How's everyone doing? So is this That's, the shipping area? Yeah, this is Jason's um, the head of shipping back there. All right, so tell me about the shipping area. So basically, these this is like a staging area. These are the orders that they pulled, and he's constantly taking these orders and getting them packaged. And um, we ship hundreds of packages a day, and you'll just see bins everywhere with packages. And uh, yeah, we just try to do it the right way. And um, this is all shipping supplies nice. everywhere. Enough, right? You know, this whole area, which is the size of a lot of card shops, is basically the shipping area. And uh, so, but yeah, like over here, this guy, he's not here on Saturdays, but his job, like he's working on 2020 um, optic football right now doing an upgrade and I just gave him these cards so tomorrow or Monday this is all fresh 21-22 upper deck hockey that's come in where I've already staged it for him these are all inserts these are all rookies um, these are things that you know it's like this is 21-22 Donners these cards will all be online Monday Tuesday and we'll have images as well. And what do you charge for those? How do you know your price points on those? Do you let we, the guys take care of that? We use a software that Beckett developed called Accelerator. It literally has every card that exists in the software with the name, the pricing, and everything. Is that book pricing? Is it's, it like it's basically book pricing. Then we can take a percentage of that. So we can get through things extremely quickly. We don't have to comp things, um, everything. We don't have to just figure out what they're called. It's you all just put it on the Beckett thing and then you're good to go. Yeah, and then the Beckett thing will push it to eBay. So we'll push to eBay as well as to the Beckett Marketplace. It sells on eBay. It comes off the Beckett Marketplace site and vice versa. Wow. So they talk to each other. So it's just nonstop adding cards. So, that's um, cool. But that's it. you got to be fresh. If you don't have fresh inventory, whether it's in your showcases or your website, people will go elsewhere. They're going to get sick of seeing the same damn things. Do you still buy, like, you have all these, You have, for example... You have like Donruss Optic right here. Do you buy those base cards still or where are these coming from? Yeah, that's my question too. Oh yeah, no, we give store credit for that type of stuff. Now granted, the base cards, if it's only base, we donate a lot of stuff too. Sometimes it gets to the point where you have so much of like it. How much Donruss Optic do you need? There's one, two, and I think you cut it off, Well, right? we started the third box, but who's oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it gets to a point where it's crazy and people don't understand. They're like, you know, they see the values and what they have. They don't understand I already own it. Yeah. And I might already own three or four of it. And I might never sell the four I have. So then we have the fishbowl where a lot of this type of stuff that I've already got enough of it. I know it goes in the fishbowl because I just don't need any more for stock. So we're trying to find ways to sell everything. Um, whether you can put your hands on it in the showroom or whether it's virtual. You can shop me from anywhere on earth. Um, we got free shipping thresholds. So um, And then the cool thing, again, you place an order online. And then you can pick it up in the store. So you feel like you're shopping us at 2 a.m. in your sweats, and you're still getting the Burbank experience. It's just virtual. And you don't have to pay for shipping. Yeah, we have free yeah, we have free shipping thresholds. Plus, if you order it and pick it up, no shipping. And it's an excuse to come back to our showroom. If someone wanted to buy this whole thing, mm -hmm. you would never sell it? Um, I don't know. That's a hell of a question. Never really thought about it. <laughs> like, if I came in right now and I was like, you know what? You have 42 million cards. I'll give you $100 million. Yeah. Hundred million dollars, you don't it, <laughs> because I could I could rebuild. You know, I this is really for Ryan. Um, it's just great that my son took such an interest, and not just took an interest, but actually is exceeding me um, in so many ways with his knowledge and his organizational systems as well. Um, this is for him. Somebody walked in with some serious stupid money, and there's a lot of stupid money out there right now. Um, yeah, it would be considered. It would definitely be considered. Um, this is a lot of work. Um, I could sell it to someone. Could they maintain it? You know, ideas are one thing. Um, execution's another. But maintenance is the hardest part of the whole thing, being able to replicate it and repeat it over and over again. And that's the hard part. And that's what we're good at. So um, my big thing is I prefer difficulty because difficulty raises the barrier to entry. And so this is why you don't walk into other shops and see this um, anywhere because it's hard. It's difficult. It's dirty. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to pay a lot of people to do a lot of things. A lot of people don't want to do this kind of work. No, no. People bitch because they have to sort like a stack. 
And literally they're whining about it. I'm like, dude, really? You know, it's it's a lazy business in a lot of ways. People want to do the easy things. They want to flip slabs. Don't take this personal. But people want to do breaks. They want to flip slabs. Things that aren't super labor intense. And then we're the complete opposite. We want to do what's difficult that there's always a demand for it. Things can go like this, you know, but this is always stable. And with the pandemic, it went like this. Um, just a quick story. Um, pandemic hit. We had to shut down. Um, nobody in the store. But our online business literally went like that, just shot through the roof. But I didn't have anybody even pull the cards. So we were sneaking a few people in. But to buy, wait, you were sneaking people in to come and buy cards? Come in and, and pull cards. Because the orders online are absolutely insane. Wow. And you're stressing. It's like, it's a, it's a first world problem. You're doing all this business, but you can't fulfill it. So that was a real problem. And it took us months to really get dialed back to the 36-hour um, promise that we have for getting cards out the door. So in a way, the pandemic kind of helped you readjust, right? Well, the pandemic was awful, but it also um, taught us a lot of things. And obviously, it brought a, new, a lot of new people to the business, but it also you know, helped us scale things because that's the problem. All these different businesses were caught where they couldn't scale quickly enough to meet the demand. And it really showed us that we had to be able to scale to that demand as well. And then when the retail opened back up and you guys are familiar with Burbank, we had lines out the door to get in here. And, you know, without the pandemic, I'm, I don't know if Burbank is in that building or not. Maybe we'd still be here. Let me ask you this. A lot of card shops are opening up now. Mm -hmm. And they, do you think they're oversaturating each other? Um, there will be cannibalization. That's another big word of the day. I think that, People are getting into an area and open a shop and they think they're gold until someone opens a shop two miles away and four miles in that direction. What do you have that's a value add that's better than the other shop? What differentiates you, right? Uh, what differentiates you? I mean, what's the vibe? What's the community? What's the inventory? How fresh is your inventory? Are you willing to buy over the counter? Because if you're just doing breaks and just doing flips and unopened product, anybody can do that. So the challenge is, what do you do above and beyond that? And um, that's the challenge. And that's why I think Burbank is so successful is that we try to be something to everybody, you know, whether it's the fishbowl, sub 20 slabs, the vibe, the new arrivals, the online component, and just friendly people that it's family. It's just, you walk in and it's, it's an experience. And uh, that's why I think that we're so successful. And I also think that there's other stores that are going to emulate to some extent what we do um, that are willing to do the work. And then I think those folks will find success as well. But do realize you're in your shop, you're doing your business. There's probably someone plotting right now to open a store in your area. And can you compete? Um, competition? I don't worry about it. My, my, my toughest competition is myself. That's the best answer I've ever heard on any of the interviews I've ever done. Yeah. It's just like, That's if it right you're there. afraid of competition, maybe you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Um, mo mo there's motivation involved in competition. Somebody comes in trying to take my piece of the pie. It's going to motivate me a little bit. And uh, I hope that does to everybody else too. Um, you know, running a hobby shop's hard. It's, you know, you think it's glory. You think it's wonderful until you get behind the counter and deal with the nuts and bolts and the bills and the headaches and the customer expectations that you may or may not be able to satisfy. And, you know, there's a million places to buy cards. There's a card show every weekend that could have 100 people behind tables that's 20 minutes away. You have eBay that is 24-7. You have Facebook groups. You have Instagram. There's a million ways to, to buy cards. What separates you? Why are they choosing you? And that's what you got to ask yourself. What's the value add? Fanatics is coming in, going to change the whole landscape. What do you do to fanatics proof your business? Just like Amazon, just like Walmart, people that really just blow up retail segments. What are you doing to survive those companies? And you're going to have to ask yourself that with fanatics as well. 
So what's your end goal for this whole thing? Do you have like a like a main like goal or something crazy like with this? Or are you just keeping it going the way it's working? I just want to be the best in the business at things that we choose to be the best at. We choose to be the best at this. We choose to have the best retail store experience. Um, and I think people count on us. Um, I think when it comes down to it, there's a lot of places where you could buy a card, buy a card, but you're paying shipping on just that single card or not able to find everything in one place. I think... The end game is just to be the go-to in the industry for the collector, for the person building sets, PCing certain players, all of those different things. And I don't think that'll ever go away. Um, whether you're buying high-end slabs on our eBay store or you're simply looking for, you know, six cards of this guy you just met that had a few cards back in the 90s when he played, we want to be able to cater to all that. Because if you cater to all that, then you just grow your, you, you expand your pie. If you're only selling slabs, you only have those folks. But if you're providing a service with all the other cards, then you're, then you're growing your, your clientele. So when people run searches on eBay, if you have results, then people will come to your store. And the more cards you have on eBay, the more results, the more chance for them to drive traffic to your store. So I think it's, it all goes hand in hand. That's the card library. Thank you so much for giving us the tour. You enjoy the tour? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome, Thank right? you. Shout out to Rob. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you ever want to come to Burbank Sports Cards, you can check it out. He'll give you a little tour. It, it costs a nickel. It's not, One nickel. It's not free. Not it's free. Not free. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, and also don't forget to subscribe. Go follow Burbank Sports Cards on Instagram, and we'll see you guys later. Later.